of cuts have been made to social care spending. The pandemic has left the sector struggling to survive. After expressing regret at not investing more in social care during my time in government, I decided to immerse myself in the care home sector for a new documentary series to understand the harsh realities facing elderly social care. Mm. In the second episode, which airs tonight, I turned my attention to paid and unpaid home care and met Derek, who is so astonishing. He cares for his, uh, for his wife, Margaret, at home mm. every day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, and she, like my mum, lives with dementia. That's Derek. I mean, it was it, one of the it, toughest days that day. Was it? I arrived at seven in the morning when they were still in bed. Yeah. With, with them the whole day until they'd gone to bed in the evening. And every second of the day, he was caring and helping Margaret. And it was it was draining. And he does it all on his own. And presumably he re receives an allowance for that. Well, the but the unpaid cut is not tiny. Not a salary. Of any not a salary. It's not a wage at all. And of course. You know, Derek's doing that because he loves, mm. adores mm. and would do anything mm. for his wife. But he's relieving a burden on sure. the government, mm. on the social care system. Mm. But he's doing it for, for practically nothing. He saves um, and unpaid carers like him tens into the hundreds of billions mm. of pounds. Because if Derek suddenly was, was ill or was incapacitated, suddenly Margaret would have to go into, into care. There's, I don't think there's anybody else. But... but he does it because he is devoted. He doesn't even really want respite care, but... So he never really gets a break, does he? Never gets a break. And, of course, as you say, his care for his wife mm -hmm. um, keeps Margaret out of a care home like St Cecilia's, which is um, a nursing and care home that Ed went to, where he, you shadowed team leader... Alison Speak and the care assistant Cameron Luntley during the first episode, which um, took place last week, and we can speak to them now. Um, well, it's absolutely lovely to see you both. Um, Alison, I wonder how lovely it was to have Ed Balls in the <laughs> care home. Do you know what? I think anybody who has seen that first episode um, will see the amazing work that you do there as staff, but also Ed was pretty good, wasn't he? He was absolutely amazing, he really was. Um, and it was just so good to have him to see part of what we know, how what we do for a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, uh, Alison, just tell us how important it is that a light, a spotlight, is shone on care homes like yours and the work that your carers do. Absolutely, it is tough, it's, it's hard what we do and there's not enough of us to do it. Um, just to see what we do um, and get it out there, you know, it's so important. We're struggling, you know, with care at the minute. Um, and it, it, needs, it needs shown, it really does. People think that, you, you know, you just sit around, cup, drink cups of tea all day, you know. It's not like that at all. Everybody needs caring for in different ways. Alison, when we are um, with, with Frank, um, who has... Uh, uh, yeah. who had severe dementia and we are talking in the episode this evening. The thing I think people will be struck by is how, while you're talking, you are still continuing to stroke and care for and give him such incredibly personal support. I think, I mean, it's very nice what you said, but the biggest compliment I can give to you is that I found it really hard. And what you do every day at work, the dedication, but also the amount of emotion and, and energy you put into it. I mean, I don't know how you manage it. How do you manage to do this job? You know what? It, it just comes natural, Ed. It really does. But, yeah, um, constantly just reminding them that they're not alone, you know. Not a lot of them have families. We, are, we become their families. So just reassuring them and making them feel loved, you know, it's, it makes all the difference just by holding a hand, Ed. It really does. Um, and I can't, I can't ask you know, answer why, how I do it, because it just comes natural. Cameron, you, you're um, there as well. You're a care assistant. Um, we desperately need more people to work as carers. Um, but you actually, while you're doing incredible work there at the home, this isn't where your future lies, is it? No, I do want to go on and further my career into a paramedic, definitely. Still hasn't changed. 
Yeah, so you want to go into the NHS from the care sector, become a paramedic. And what are the reasons yeah. for that? What could the care sector do to hang on to your skills? Uh, I think it's, I just enjoy the status and uh, being a paramedic, there's a lot more status behind it and respect. Money, I assume, is better, or definitely is better. Right. Not saying man's terrible at the minute, but is 100% better. Right, so status mm -hmm. and pay. And, uh, Ed, I mean, that's part of the problem with the care sector, why we don't give carers the kind of status that would encourage mm -hmm. um, Cameron to stay in the sector and pay. I think we need to learn from what the NHS does, because Cameron, aged 19, he is a brilliant carer, but if he goes into the NHS as a paramedic, he'll have bands, he can rise up. Yeah. There'll be training, which is recognised across the whole country. So it's not just money, as Cameron says, it's status. And we've got to do the same thing for the social care workforce, or we're going to have continual problems of high turnover and people leaving. Um, is there anything, Cameron, we can persuade, uh, we can do to persuade you to stay in care? Um... I don't think so. I think I've made my mind up where I want to go. I'm going to stay here for a while, I assume, but I'm so, my mind's so set on furthering my career into something more livable that I'm going to be comfortable doing. I said to you um, when we were on the film, what was um, your expectation when you started and what was doing the job like compared to what you were expecting? Um, I think there's only so much you can learn in college. When I was in college, all, all the theory side of it's completely different to actually performing the job, but get, being in the care sector is completely different. It's, it's a very rewarding job, though, definitely would go into it if you're furthering your career into health and social care. Cameron, I've got to say, I think you'll be a brilliant paramedic and the National Health Service will be really, really lucky to, to have you. It's a great thing to... Um, to want to do, but it's, it's, it's a tragedy, but we're not persuading people like you to stay in care. And it goes back to the conversation we had, Alison. People uh, weren't clapping for care work, as you told me. We're just unskilled us. What would you say to people around the country who, who might be thinking these care workers paid £9.30 an hour? It's because they're unskilled. Yeah, um, it was heartbreaking to hear that, Ed, you know. 31 years old when I started this place. I'm not unskilled at all. I've worked my way up to where I am today. You know, um, you do your MVQs, you get a lot of support. There's, there's so many things you can actually do. We're not unskilled at all, absolutely not. Well, we've been, um, you know, we've had so many messages in on this. Um, Ellie says it's so refreshing to see people on the front line of the care crisis. It, it seems to be, um, you know, you're the poor relations of the NHS and I think anybody who has been into a care home, anyone who has a relative or a friend or a loved one looked after in a care home would think that that status mm. is simply unacceptable. The skills that you have to have to deal with people, often with, you know, complex mm. medical needs or with dementia, Alzheimer's, which lead to perhaps mm. behavioural mm. change, which can be very challenging. The work that you do makes you total heroes. And, uh, you know, lots of people getting in touch to say that they've had excellent care. Um, Shona, my mum's in a care home during lockdown. It was difficult not seeing her. The staff looking after her did an amazing job. So blessed they're able to support her through this. So much, res much respect for them and so grateful for them. Alison, during the pandemic, you know, you were there pretty much on your own, weren't you? Because that help and support from relatives wasn't available. Yeah, that's right, Susanna. Um, but we have a great team here at St Cecilia's, you know. There wasn't one moment where anybody, you know, um, collapsed. We just got on. Um, it was like a living nightmare, to be honest with you. But we did it. Um, we just stepped in. We've become everything. <laughs> You and did. how are things at the moment, um, Alison? Are you able to get the staff you need into the care home at the moment or um, are you all having to work longer hours? It's still the same, Ed. It really is. It's hard, you know. We're getting applicants and then when they're getting applicants not turning in for their interview. Um, we just need to keep doing what we're doing best, Ed, um, and just hope and pray. I think until you actually come in and see what we do, um, 
you know, we need to get more out there, but because of the pandemic, it's, it's really hard. We did a lot of things by going to colleges and things like that, but obviously, we'll just keep going and do what we do best, Ed. We need you back for a shift anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and, um, and we need people like you, Cameron, to stay. I completely understand, and, and the NHS is going to benefit from your skills when you, you know, uh, become a paramedic. But we need to change the care sector, terms of employment and conditions, so that people like Cameron see a future in the care sector. Alison and Cameron, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Such so much. Such important work you're doing. Really. And, um, and, and thank you very much thank for everything. Thank you very much. Thanks for teaching me so much. Yeah. It's good. You're very welcome. Hope Mum's well, Ed. Thank you, Alison. Thank you. She's good. She's good. Uh,